हेलो एंड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टू येट अनादर ब्लॉग दिस टाइम ऑन कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड येस वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द ब्लॉग विच इज फॉर कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड वन एंड कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड टू सो इन दैट कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ दैट सीरीज दिस कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग दिस टाइम आई एम डिस्कसिंग कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड थ्री फॉर योर एग्जामिनेशन एंड प्लीज नोट दैट दिस इज अ क्विक रिविजनरी वीडियो ऑफ कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड थ्री आफ्टर viewing this video you have to go through the entire notes completely and do the practical questions yourself so this is a quick revisionary note of cas 3 very important cas guys uh, it has been revised in 2015 earlier the name of the cas was overheads now the name of the cas is production and operations overhead so earlier this cas used to cover all the overheads which are prevalent however now this cas only covers production and operation overheads so before starting the discussion on cas 3 let me ask you a very simple question question is what is the relationship between a mom and a son might sound funny to you Uh, but yes it is relevant to this cas and hence i am asking this question to you what is the relationship between a mom and a son or a daughter for that matter the relationship is that if son or daughter or kids want to know anything which they don't know they will ask their mom so mom will will clarify all the queries which son or daughter has so before coming on to production and operation overheads we should first understand what is the meaning of overheads because production and operation overheads is a subset of overheads so the first question is sir what is overheads now the uh, uh, the best part is that cas 3 does not define overheads cas 3 only defines production and operation overheads so sir how do we know what is overheads because before understanding what is production and operation overheads we should understand what is overheads so guys i have told you in cas 1 video that cas 1 is mother of all cases and hence it is the master cas which may be referred by all other cases in case of any difficulty so we will borrow the definition of overheads from cas 1 so cas 3 is the son cas 1 is the mom and hence now son will borrow the definition of overheads from his mom mom is cas 1 according to cas 1 overhead means now this is the definition which is not there in cas 3 and i'm borrowing it from cas 1 overhead means it comprises of indirect material indirect employee cost and indirect expenses which are not directly identifiable or allocable to a cost object in an economically feasible way now please note that these four words an economically feasible way are very very important at this point because these words define what is a overhead now it's really simple to understand guys just um, uh, give me your 100% attention and i'll uh, explain to you what do you mean by economically feasible manner or economically feasible way तो वी हैव स्टडीड टू काइंड ऑफ एक्सपेंसेस डायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसेस इनडायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसेस इनडायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसेस इज आल्सो नोन एज द ओवरहेड्स इनडायरेक्ट एक्सपेंसेस और द ओवरहेड्स नाउ आई टेल यू व्हाट इफ वी पुट इन एफर्ट्स एंड कॉस्ट then we will be able to identify the cost object of indirect expenses just as direct expenses so what are direct expenses direct expenses are those expenses which can be identified with a particular cost object so indirect expenses are the expenses which are not uh, identified by a particular or attributable to a particular cost object if we put in efforts and cost then we will be able to identify the cost object for the indirect expenses also but the cas requires us not to put in additional effort or cost i mean your cost and benefit analysis should be done before allocating all the expenditure to the cost object 
सो इफ आई गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल सो इफ देर इज एन इनडायरेक्ट एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ से रुपीज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड विच नीड्स टू बी एलोकेटेड टू कॉस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट एंड यू आर इनकरिंग अ कॉस्ट ऑफ से फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड कॉस्ट मीन्स एम्प्लॉय कॉस्ट देर बी एन एम्प्लॉय हु वुड एलोकेट दिस एक्सपेंडिचर और देर बी देर बी एनी सिस्टम्स कॉस्ट विच विल बी रिक्वायर्ड टू एलोकेट दिस एक्सपेंडिचर इफ यू इनकर दिस कॉस्ट कॉस्ट इज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड एंड यू आर एबल टू एलोकेट दिस इंटरट एक्सपेंस टू द कॉस्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन अ प्रिसाइज मैनर देन इट इज नॉट वर्थ इट स्पेंडिंग फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड रुपीज टू एलोकेट अ ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एक्सपेंडिचर इज नॉट वर्थ इट हेंस यू शुड एलोकेट द एक्सपेंडिचर डायरेक्टली only to the extent it is economically feasible otherwise you can ignore those expenses which are of indirect nature and then we can absorb these expenses at a later stage you need not attribute the indirect expenditure to the cost object at the very first instance if it is not economically feasible so the key is that cost benefit analysis should be done while identifying the indirect expense as indirect expense and that economic feasible economic economically feasible manner that manner should be adopted to allocate the overheads if you are sure that you will not be able to allocate the overheads in an economically feasible manner to the cost object ignore them you treat them as overheads and then overheads can be absorbed at a later stage at a later point of time and hence the definition which is given in cas 1 uses this words in an economically feasible way so all those expenditure which are not directly attributable to a particular cost object in an economically feasible way are to be treated as overheads and are to be categorized as overheads according to cas 3 and the treatment which cas 3 gives for production and operation overheads should be undertaken for that particular overhead so this is the definition of overheads now coming on to the definition of production and operation overheads which is a cas 3 definition this is not a cas 1 definition this definition stays says indirect cost involved in production of a product on or in providing services so any indirect cost first of all it has to be indirect cost and please remember that indirect cost classification should be done in an economically feasible way you need not spend resources to allocate this cost and hence you can categorize it as indirect cost so indirect cost which includes indirect material indirect labor and other item of cost involved in the production of a product or in providing services is known as production overheads now please understand that production overheads operations overheads factory overheads works overheads manufacturing overheads are synonym to each other all these words denote the same meaning production overheads operation overheads factory overheads work overheads and manufacturing overheads denote the same meaning and are used inter interchangeably and one very very important element of production and operation overheads is that it includes administration cost relating to production factory works and manufacturing of pro, um, uh, or manufacturing and providing of services so any administration cost which is related to production factory works or manufacturing that should also be categorized as production and operation overheads and not as administrative overheads that administration is relating to production and hence the overhead is known as production overheads so this is the definition of production and operations overheads now let us move on to principles of measurement of production and operation overheads how will you measure what is the amount of production and operation overheads now we have bifurcated the cas has bifurcated this um, production overheads into two parts first part is when you are incurring the Uh, overheads from outside the organization which means you are purchasing these overheads you are not in house incurring the overheads but you are uh, obtaining services from an outside person to um, uh, work for you for these overheads situation number 1 situation number 2 when you are incurring these overheads within your organization which means you have in house resources and you are providing these overheads or these services within the organization then this overheads are treated in a different manner if you are obtaining it from outside then they are measured in a different manner 
So it's simple to understand guys. Uh, this principle is repeated in many other casts. So please listen to this principle very, very carefully. If the overheads are procured from outside the organization, then they are to be measured as per the invoice price or agreed price. Obviously, the invoice price which we are going to pay in future for those overheads, that will be the price of this overheads, which includes duties and taxes, other expenditure directly attributable thereto, net of discounts. So discounts are to be netted off. But please note, cash discount is not to be netted off and only trade discount is to be netted off. Why, sir? Why net discount is a uh, cash discount is not to be uh, netted off? Why is a uh, uh, but why is there an embargo on cash discount? Students, cash discount is nothing but your financial income because cash discount is given on upfront payment of money. So cash discount is financial income and just the way financial expenses like interest is disallowed is not taken into consideration while preparing cost sheet. Cash discount is also not taken into consideration while calculating the cost sheet. Therefore, you ignore the cash discount and you net your uh, invoice price off with trade discount. Then if there are any taxes and duties which are refundable or to be credited like SendVAT credit, um, that is to be reduced from your uh, cost of overhead. Now, second is when you are incurring overhead within the organization, which means you are not procuring it from outside, but within the organization, you are incurring these overheads. Then they would include all the expenses. It includes all the cost incurred in connection with provision of these overheads. And the cost would primarily include material cost, labor cost, and other item of expenses. These are the three costs which you will be incurring if you are providing the overheads and you are not procuring them from outside but you are procuring them from inside within the organization so includes cost incurred in connection therewith for example machine spare fabricated internally or repair job carried out internally includes cost incurred on the material employee and expenses so these are the two categories which you need to learn very very uh, precisely yep and then certain principles of production and operation overheads guys abnormal cost is not to be included while computing the production and operation overheads imputed cost is not to be included then if the if there is an this there is any variance variance means whenever you are using standard costing for computing your cost and there is a variance then if it, the variance is attributed to normal reasons, then your variance should also form part of production and operation overheads. However, if the variance is attributable to abnormal reasons, then it should be excluded from production or operation overheads. Any subsidy or grant should be deducted from computing the production and uh, operation overhead. Any fine penalty damages or similar levies should be excluded from production and operation overheads. Credits and recoveries should be deducted from production and operation overheads. Any change in cost accounting principle. So if you are following a particular cost accounting principle in the previous year and in the current year you decide to change it to a different cost accounting principle, then there are only three conditions when you can do this change. This change can happen only if number one, it is required by law. Number two, if it is for compliance with the requirement of cost accounting standards. Number three, the change would result in more appropriate preparation and presentation of cost statements of an entity. So the company has to prove to the cost auditor that changing the cost accounting principle will satisfy either of the three conditions. Three conditions are it is required by law. The law is asking you to change the principle. So uh, production overhead was being uh, absorbed to the material on the basis of actual units till the last year. And from the current year, you are actually allocating the production and uh, operation overhead on the basis of, say, um, space occupied by a particular cost object. This is a change in cost accounting principle. Now, to justify this change, you have to uh, justify to the cost auditor either of the three situations, three conditions are it is required by law that law is requiring you any law of land law of India, which is requiring you to change this principle or for compliance with requirement of cost accounting standard cost accounting standard suppose undergoes a change and it requires you to uh, follow a particular principle or the change would result in a more appropriate preparation or presentation of the cost statement of an entity. 
any of the three conditions if you satisfy then you are allowed to change your principle of cost accounting then last topic of this uh, CAS, the last important topic of this CAS is assignment of production overheads. How do you assign the production overheads to the cost objects? Guys, there are two principles which determine how you uh, allocate the cost. Uh, the Obviously, the very first, um, the before these principles are applied, the very first uh, principle would be that if a particular cost is directly identifiable or traceable to a particular cost object, then you directly attribute it to that particular cost object. This is the basic underlying principle. However, if you are not able to directly allocate a particular production or um, uh, operation overhead to a particular uh, cost center, then you apply one of the following two tests. What are these two tests? Test number one, cause and effect relationship. So if there is a cause and effect relationship, you identify what is the cause of incurring that expense. So effect is incurrence of expense causes the reason which led to incurrence of that expense. So if say you are incurring production and operation overhead of 2 lakh rupees for a particular year and if you are able to tell me that sir this 2 lakh rupees the cause of this 2 lakh rupees was to use it in cost object 1 then I will tell you, please allocate the entire 2 lakh in cost object 1 because the cause for incurring this expenditure was cost object 1. And the second principle is benefits received. You need to tell me which cost object is getting benefits out of this particular expenditure. And I will ask you to allocate this expenditure to that particular cost object. So the first principle is cause and effect. You tell me what is the cause of this particular incurrence of this expenditure. I will ask you to allocate uh, the entire expenditure in that um, uh, cost object. And second principle is benefits received. You tell me which cost object will receive the maximum benefit because of this expenditure. And I will then ask you to allocate that overhead in that particular cost object. So these are the two principles of assignment of production overheads. So this is a brief summary of cost accounting standard 3. Guys, a very important uh, standard. And yes, uh, this basically is a theory standard and theory um, uh, uh, question can be asked from this standard. Please do it very, very um, uh, carefully because it involves an amalgamation of CAS 1 and CAS 3. This is an amalgamation of two CASs because you need to borrow the definition of overheads from CAS 1. Therefore, you need to first read CAS 1 very, very carefully. And then you will be able to appreciate the principles of CAS 3. So yes, that's about it. Um, I hope you found this video useful uh, and um, please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any video of any of the cases which I am going to uh, release shortly before your examination. I am trying to cover all the cost accounting standards in the upcoming videos and would try to release the videos as soon as possible. Please um, uh, do study hard because now uh, a quick time check today is 12th of, Nove uh, 12th of November and um, uh, time is really running short you are running uh, uh, short of time so quickly quickly uh, keep continuing your revision doing your revision and uh, just do well and just keep on moving ahead so yes all the best and happy studying